Well, hello, everybody. It is your favorite day of the week. Another day of a lifetime of Hallmark. I am Les Kirkendall Barrett. Hello, Jason Bowers. Hello, Les Kirkendall Barrett. And hello, Kirk Fitzpatrick. Hello, Les Kirkendall Barrett. And hello, Jason Bowers. We take movies from both Lifetime and the Hallmark Channel and try to make sense of them. We're not very successful, though, because they don't often make sense, but they are fun to watch. And we go down all kinds of rabbit holes. We talk about Angelion quite a bit. We talk about the show Enos. June uh, Squibb. <laughs> we, we, are, we are team June Squibb oh, June all the way. Way. And we have Black China news every single episode. So with that in mind, why don't you listen to A Lifetime of Hallmark? You can listen wherever you get your favorite podcasts. This is a Kirkendall Barrett presentation. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. It is your favorite day of the week. It is time for another episode of the Reality Reading Rainbow, where I talk about books written by reality stars, primarily those from Bravo, and I try to make sense of them. I am your host, Les Kirkendall Barrett. Hello. And before we get our podcast underway, I uh, just wanted to say hi. Thank you for coming. Uh, I've got a great episode planned for today. But before I do that, I just wanted to let you know that if you are interested, I have started a Patreon. And uh, there are all sorts of levels and there are all sorts of perks. Uh, I'm, I'm using the money to buy books for the podcast. And listen, hey, I know it's tough for all of us right now. So if you don't have the money, fine. I would rather have you here listening to the podcast and having a great time. But I just thought I would just throw that out there. Also, for those of you who have already um, donated to the Patreon, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for your support. And I just want to let you know that the bonus episodes and the special feature called The Book Club, which basically it's going to entail having a Zoom call once a month where we discuss a couple of the books uh, that I talk about, that's all going to start in a couple of weeks. That's going to start like uh, the beginning of February. So stay tuned for that. And now, on with the show. So today, uh, as you know, last week I talked about the Erica Jane book, Pretty Mess, which was a mess, but was not pretty. And so today, I decided to have uh, Ronald Richards back on the show. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ronald Richards is a lawyer. He's a legal analyst. And he is following, he's following the Erica and Tom Girardi case on Twitter. And his tweets are very, very informative. And I actually really enjoy reading them. And so I, last time he was here, uh, everybody loved it. And everybody loved the info that he, he gave. He dropped some great tea. So I thought, you know what? have him back. He is a friend of our show now, so I decided to have him back. And so without further ado, here is my interview with Ronald Richards. 
Enjoy. Well, hey, everybody. We're actually having a special guest today. Actually, he's a return guest to the show. Um, As you know, last week we were read and discussed the Erica Jane Pretty Mess book, which to recap was pretty much of a mess. <laughs> and so I thought that it would be a great treat for us to have Ronald Richards back on the show. He's been here before. Let me give him a quick introduction before we talk, though. Ronald Richards has been an attorney for 27 and a half years. He's licensed on both coasts, and he has a propensity to expose bad apples in his profession. Richards has a long pedigree of established opinions in both federal and state appellate courts. He has extensive experience, uh, criminal and civil trial work. He was a paid legal analyst for NBC News, including the Michael Jackson trial. He has also sat as a temporary judge and taught law school. He is able to extract documents at a biotic rate and uses his media skills to expose uh, public harm. So let's welcome Ronald Richards. Hey, Ronald, welcome back. Thank you, Les. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. And we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> you are still following the Erica Jane, uh, Tom Girardi case. Uh, can you update us and let us know what is currently going on? Well, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, exciting developments in the last uh, 24 hours and since we uh, last spoke. And if you want to follow them um, in real time, besides on your show, you can also follow them on my Twitter feed at at Ronald Richards. Um, So uh, I post them so people can see court documents and stuff. But in the last uh, 24 hours, um, the trustee of the bankruptcy estate for Girardi and Keese has filed a lawsuit against one of the attorneys who already had a judgment against Girardi for trying to take clients um, from the firm in violation of the various stays and injunctions that's gone on. And the judge set an emergency hearing for February 2nd. Um, the trustees settled over $6 million in claims um, to bring money back in the estate. Er, uh, Erica Girardi moved into a $9,500 a month apartment for, uh, that she's renting from two workers' comp lawyers that uh, contend they have no relationship with her other than landlord tenant. I have no reason to doubt that. Robert uh, Girardi has filed a, a, a temporary conservator uh, ship case against his brother. Um, and that hearing is going to be heard um, in February. Uh, I believe February 3rd is uh, the day after the restraining order hearing. That they're going to decide whether they're going to appoint a temporary conservator uh, for Girardi, which would be um, another um, amazing twist in this case that he would have a temporary conservator. That's about it. I mean, that's that's the short end. But I mean, really, just so many legal events are going on at one time. It's hard to uh, keep track of them all as they keep unfolding by the way the probate hearing i misspoke is february 1st okay. at 1 30 in the probate court in in los angeles okay so let's talk about the elephant in the room which is um and you mentioned this the fact that erica is renting a place that is 95 no not nine thousand five hundred dollars a month now my question is, is, are her assets still frozen, though? Yes, her, there is an asset freeze, and there was a federal asset freeze. I don't know where she's getting this money from, uh, but, you know, th- there's going to be, you know, subpoenas that are going to be issued, and she's going to have to fig- figure it out. And, and you, cut, you cut out for a little second, but what I heard you say, so you said there is an asset freeze. I'm sorry, uh, there is an asset freeze and a federal asset freeze. Is that what you said? Yeah, there's an asset freeze from the federal judge, which is backstopped by the bankruptcy estate automatic stay. And she also has a restraining order from her divorce case. So okay. money should not be, I mean, if she's 
paying expenses, that money is going to have to come from a very uh, clean source. Because, yeah, and even, you know, the reports were saying that it's, you know, it's in Hancock Park. I used to live near Hancock Park. Hancock Park is not cheap at all. And, and, and it's funny because, you know, they the article talks about how, you know, she downgraded, but her downgrade would be an upgrade for a lot of people. Now, is she going to have to at some point be held accountable for this rental or explain this to someone? Absolutely. Yeah, th this is... This is a very nice address. I did not post the address because um, I didn't want to go down that road unless it became relevant in a court document. But we're, we're talking about a um, the, the, the landlord's wife was a realtor lawyer. She listed it. It's a very nice place in a, in a high end neighborhood, you know, um, by 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 let's just say between La Brea and Highland south of Beverly Boulevard. Um, it's a nice, a nice neighborhood for sure. And we're talking about a very expensive property, you know, a couple million dollar property that was the prior home of these people that were renting to her. And it's funny that you mentioned that too, because I would think, um, you know, if someone downsized, like they would move, are you familiar with Park La Brea? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. I'm a Los Angelino. Um, and those for and for those of you who don't live in Los Angeles, Park La Brea is this. How would you describe it? Kind of like a development, but it's a I would high describe it as high density multifamily homes that are reasonable in price. And, and it and but yeah, and a lot of property. Just so you know, less. I mean, we're talking about a three bedroom, three bathroom. Uh, home on a 6,700 square foot lot that was, um, that was purchased, uh, you, just so you have a, a concept of this, um, the, the, the lot was this, this was a, you know, this is a nicely redone house with an assessed value of 1.7 million, but that's from 2014. So in six years, this thing is, is, is gone, you know, way up in value. And uh, we're, we're talking about a very nice property that um, a lot of families would love to live in. It's, this is not like some bad property at all. Oh, I know the neighborhood. I know the neighborhood. And it is, um, as a matter of fact, um, I had my wedding reception in that neighborhood um, in my in a friend's place. And yeah, it is not, it is by no means even close to a bad neighborhood at all. Uh, another question. Yeah, just so you know, I pulled up the comps. They're like all in the middle twos for houses by her. Uh, question. So have you been looking at her Instagram feed? Yes, I, I posted on that. A few uh, viewers have thought I was um, basically criticizing her for showing her risque photos and of course, that's not what I was doing. My critique was she was tone deaf on the issue of all the flaunting of the wealth. And it seems like she has no sympathy towards the people that have been victimized. If she would say, look, I'm raising money by, by branding and I'm going to start donating 25% of this to the victims, it would make sense to me. But it just seems like there's not even a, an acknowledgement of what happened here. Yeah, because I belong to a couple of um, of Bravo uh, discussion groups. And so the, there is a big discussion about her Instagram feed because to us, it basically seems like she's like, you know, sticking up her middle finger to everybody and saying, you know, F you. I'm going to do this and I don't give a crap what you think. That's the, that's the impression I get. Um, that's well, that is, I, I mean, as a lawyer, I like to report accurately. I mean, that is an inference that she's sticking her middle finger up, but just factually she's posting egregious displays of wealth. Like she's still on Bravo and not recognizing 
that her husband is implicated in some 30 to $40 million fraud scheme. Exactly. And, and now another question is this. So last week on the show, um, I read and discussed her book, her autobiography. So part of her autobiography is she not only flaunts her wealth, she then goes into a timeline of her career and talks about how her husband financed her career. And she talks about it and it's in print and it's almost like a timeline. Can that book be used in court? Absolutely. It would be uh, an admission by her. Um, I mean, look, I don't think it's going to be a dispute that her career is is anything but community property. I don't think that they had a prenup. I think that that he gave her money and helped her career and that I don't think there, this is going to be a dispute in the case at all. I just think that it, the real issue will be is what transfers were made to her um, in the last 24 months. If, the, if there's that's really the big picture. What 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 community property was transferred out to her, and is she going to try to keep it? Because nobody that rent is not free. We're talking about a hundred and twenty thousand dollar commitment between security deposit and rent, and then the, just the overhead of having a high end place like that cable, you know, everything else, utilities. Now, another thing that I'm curious about is you mentioned uh, about um, the competency hearing for 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 Tom Girardi. Can you explain to us a little bit what is does that entail? What would that mean? With can you, you uh, can you just say that one more time? You the. Uh, oh, I'm audio sorry. He broke up for a sec. Okay. Well, um, you mentioned before. You mentioned that Tom was going to have a competency hearing uh, to see if he was competent to stand trial. What exactly would that mean? Okay. Yeah, it's not to stand trial. That would be a separate hearing. If if he could have his criminal charges suspended, what 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 that is, what 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 that is is that he's gonna have a temporary conservator appointed. And that means that um, he won't be able to be dragged into some of these civil cases that someone's gonna take over his affairs. And uh, it, it, it may work for a criminal case, it may not. It'll certainly be evidence of his competency or lack of competency. Um, but what it basically means is that um, you know someone else is gonna manage his affairs because the, his brother's saying that he's not capable of them and uh, he'll have to help out his brother. Um, it, it's a ploy to try to avoid getting, you know, to delay any criminal charges. Uh, it, that's all this is. It's, it's, a, it's a creative way of trying to say, look, I know I took all this money, but I, I was taken advantage of by all these lenders that kept making me sign all these documents. And then I ended up making a bunch of bad business decisions with client money because I have diminished capacity. Okay, okay, so let's say that it is found in court that he does have diminished capacity. Let's say that comes, that happens. Is he then gonna have to have a guardian? Is he gonna have to live with someone? Is he gonna have to have maybe a conservatorship? What yeah. would happen? Yeah, there would be a conservatorship that would take over his ability to spend money and um, I don't necessarily think a creditor would oppose that. He couldn't practice law anymore, obviously. He couldn't enter into contracts and it would sort of, he would sort of become a ward of the conservator, okay. like Britney Spears. But I mean, he right. could still walk around. Uh, now, if he gets charged criminally, then the criminal judge would have to find that he's lacking competence to stand for a criminal trial. See, in theory, if he really was incapable of participating in his defense, he would be deprived in effective defense because a defense attorney needs to communicate with his client. But if he's just diminished capacity where he can't balance his checkbook, he may qualify for a conservator, but still have enough criminal uh, capacity to sit for a criminal trial. They're not exactly the same. They're related, but not the same. 
and okay, and I was I was you know I I read I read your tweets and I you know they are so informative and I really you know I, that it's really helping make the case make sense to me and one of the things that I was reading in your tweets there was a mention of the Southern California gas leak litigation can you tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I mean, a one lawyer got him to sign a document, um, Boris Trazon, that basically st- gave him permission to take um, the clients in that case if he wanted them, and, and Girardi would have get nothing for it, basically, except that he, he would be reimbursed for some cost. I can't figure out why he would sign that document. And so Trazon uh, is now a defendant in a lawsuit by the trustee, and there's also a restraining order hearing to restrain him from taking any clients, and they're going to undo any transactions related to that and also cancel this uh, assumption agreement that they that they sign. And then secondarily, the Franz law firm has agreed to basically take over all the litigation, and the trustee cut a deal with Franz. So basically, they'll be getting almost the same fee split they were when Gir- Girardi was a lot, you know, uh, participating in the case. So they're coming at all the other lawyers in this uh, Southern California gas litigation to basically stop them from doing anything. Now, is Girardi's law firm like technically closed? I know he can't like he's not allowed to practice right now, but is his firm kind of like in limbo or has it closed? What happens with that? Well, shockingly, Les, it unfortunately it, it, it's not it's not in um, it's not he's allowed to practice still. Um, oh, just so you understand. In fact, yeah, he's the, the State Bar has not acted to shut him down. In fact. Many people have called me, including reporters, and have said, hey, he tells them he's in a mediation. I have another case where we may be coming on as counsel where he's still calling a, my, a, my colleagues saying, hey, we're going to get this straightened out. You know, but then he's signing these stupid agreements called assumption and lien agreements that the trustees is moving to cancel. So um, the basically with respect to what's happening now is his firm is not operating but there's all these pipeline of cases that the trustee has captured and she's trying to maximize the value. That is so, that is so crazy to me. It is. It you is. Know. It is. It is a, I mean, really, I, I mean, I'm glad I'm following this, but it takes so much. It takes so much to follow it. You have no idea. Well, and, and it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned that because I, having read uh, Erica Girardi's book. Halfway through the book, I found myself getting angry, and the reason why I would, I found myself getting angry is she didn't hesitate to say, "Oh, my husband's this fine up standing lawyer, and he believes in helping the people, and he's such a good person," and it corresponds with the time that all this stuff was going on and she literally in this book would flaunt her wealth and go like oh yeah we have a private jet and it's like yeah you have a private jet off of the backs of accident victims you know (laughs) and so i could see like i could see you you know you following this just having it get to you sometimes just because it's like the nerve you know the nerve of these people um oh a, 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 another, right. Okay, so recently, Erica, th- this week, I didn't know if you saw this or not, but Erica was uh, uh, filmed uh, going into a, a KFC, a Kentucky Fried Chicken, and it looked so staged, and I'm not saying that she, you know, I'm not saying that it's staged or anything, but do people do things like that in order to prove, oh, yeah, I am downsizing, Your Honor. I'm, you know, I'm I'm broke. Do people do things like that? No, that's just uh, for her, for that's just a, a theatrical performance to try to pretend that she's cutting back on her expenses or 
I don't know, to create a conversation piece because she probably has never eaten at Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's what I was getting. I mean, who eats a Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I could if it was a Popeyes, then I would get it, or uh, you know, or what's my other one that I like in uh, churches? You oh, know, I love I mean, churches. If it was one of, yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't say Kentucky Fried Chicken is the best fried chicken in L.A. I mean, why run in there? Right. Yeah. You know, so you go to Roscoe's or something if you're exactly. going to do it. That's what I meant. Roscoe's. Roscoe's. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So I mean, come on. So, so what, um, and, and this is just, you know, um, what, what do you, can you, what do you foresee happening from here and with what's going on now? Well, I think the judge is going to open up a new layer of damages for the trustee and go after, uh, Trazon, uh, who I've known since law school. Um, I think they're going to go after his firm and, He's going to have to. He's going to have to have a lot of tap dancing to do to try to avoid the trustee's wrath. Um, but we'll see. I mean, he's a good lawyer. He'll figure it out. But uh, the uh, the issue really is that I I see them. They're just going to start trying to claw back money and preserve Girardi's settlements. And Franz will go forward on the Southern Gas leak cases. He was a big proponent in kind of cutting off. Uh, Trazon's firm from getting these cases. I, I know when I was posting some of this stuff today, the viewers didn't understand it all, but I mean, following the money is the most cr critical thing in a bankruptcy case and in, in the, in the targets that have the money. Uh, eventually, Erica's going to be getting sued um, um, and that's what's going to happen. Um, and, and last question, how much longer can this go on? How how much you know? This has been going on a a while now. How much longer can this go? Oh, this is going to go on for a long time. For a long time, okay. I would say. I would say. Let me be specific. I mean, nothing's going to get resolved in less than a year. All right, and then one last question popped up. So I know her assets are frozen. So does this mean that? the money she makes from the Real Housewives goes is frozen too? Not really. I, I think that that's post estate income. Mm -hmm. I think that she may be able to keep that income. I, I don't necessarily think that that's part of the frozen estate because that's new money that she's earning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, let's face it. If she's allowed to keep that Housewives money, she's not hurting. <laughs> I don't know how much she makes. It's hard to say. I mean, like I said, she's a target in a bunch of lawsuits. So right. we're coming after her um, as our others are. Um, but again, I, I don't necessarily think anything precludes her from earning new money. It's really assets that she received uh -huh. um, that were transferred to her or, or other community assets that Girardi transferred away. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Ronald, thank you so much for coming back on the show. The last episode, listeners just ate it up, like ate it up to the point that um, uh, one day alone, we literally, our episode literally had over a thousand downloads in like one day. And so. Wow. Uh, yeah. So the listeners really love what you um what you have to say and ever since that episode i've been getting messages and letters like when are you having him back when are you having him back and so much is happening with this case that you know it it i and, and it's great to have you back and it's like we always get great conversation and great information uh once again how can we follow you on twitter uh, it's at ronald richards and uh, R O N A L D R I C H A R D S. And Les, your your interviewer voice is really fantastic to be the uh, recipient of your questions because it's clear and deep. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'll take I'll take it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, so I, I I enjoy being on. I think your questions are cogent, pointed, 
and not, uh, you know, not loquacious. And I try to give you a uh, clear pathway. And again, I've enjoyed getting the message out because um, collectively all these viewers have um, helped me and provided important information to advance um, this really important story that's affected so many people. Well, th well, thank you. And thank you, you know, you, thank you for coming on again. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to, to speak with me. And you are welcome to come back here anytime you want. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I will look thank forward you. to it. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you want to get in touch with me and if you want to, you know, uh, say hello or or suggest a book, because I am always open to book suggestions and some of the best books that I have read so far are listener suggestions. So if you would like to do that, please, e uh, you can email me at the reality reading rainbow at gmail.com that is the reality reading rainbow at gmail.com and don't forget my my patreon if you are so inclined and that's about it keep reading bye